You and mom were teenage sweethearts. And don't say you had a bond. Fargo! You want me to say we had a bond? Yes, I do. We had a bond! So these kids, um, Dina and Charlie, have been pretty sheltered. Like, by virtue of not having TV, not having phones. Do you think that that's made them more prepared for this world that they're ultimately entering into? Or less prepared? (laughs) Because they just don't know. I do think, given who their father is, Allie's sort of the parent that thinks you learn by doing. And so, you know, he he's sort of their mentor for everything and life skills and how to, you know, probably change a light bulb to how to fix a toilet and like, you know, even political views. And I think ultimately they're more prepared without those things through this series. It's kind of the first time you see that put to the test. You can see where, you know, what they've learned coming to the surface and see how just prepared they are. I mean, like there's points where, you know, Charlie doesn't know what Star Wars is, but he does know how to, uh, I don't know, help his dad like prepare cactus to eat or whatever. Um, <laughs> what do you think about him? Um, right. I mean, I think it's it's obviously both. Uh, he's he's more prepared in, in a lot of ways, like uh, being able to practically fix a lot of things and, and uh, being mechanically more um, gifted than most kids his age would be. Um, but I think in a lot of ways, what makes it easier on him uh, kind of makes him less prepared um, because he doesn't really know what he's missing. I mean, he doesn't know what Star Wars is. He doesn't know what Xbox is. So he he kind of just, what the life that he's living now is all he's ever known. And he thinks it's entirely normal, uh, which is what makes him not question what's going on, and which is what makes him just kind of accept whatever his dad does, which I think it kind of makes him less prepared because uh, – it gets him in, in a lot of uh, bad situations. But if, if he knew kind of how messed up some of w- what he was going through was, he wouldn't have been so quick to accept. Yeah, like they really, you know, their dad's whole thing is like, oh, this is an adventure. Like we're getting out into the world. Like you're, you know, you're our kids. Like you're better off with us than anyone else. First of all, that's pretty selfish. But like, you know, that's whatever. You know, they do sort of go along with it which is like a little bit of a a stockholm syndrome kind of thing like they you know they've spent years and years believing that this is the right thing to do so my question is this if your parents were like we have to go uh what would you do (laughs) logan maybe you could go first your actual parents i yeah i mean i think i would do similar i would be very similar to sort of what my character does i mean in that first moment when margo's going okay we're going and dina's like going like, what are you talking about where are we going where I feel like I would be exactly like that we'd probably have it out and I would consistently protest just like her and I think that's something that we connect to um or something I connected to when I was reading it and when I was doing it because she isn't down to really go along with his plan and um constantly objects and I think she's hoping that's you know down the line it is going to benefit her and i think also in a way she's you know attuning to him and becoming the parent in the situation and like a parent would with a kid you kind of just go along with their plan being like okay sure honey we'll just see how this goes (laughs) and so she's she's definitely the power dynamic has switched between her and her parents that's a good example also they don't have any money (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they don't have phones. And so there's not really a lot they can do other than yeah, literally no what Dina does, which is run away. Yeah. Charlie handles things a little bit differently than than Dina. Just, and I wonder if it's sort of by virtue of his age. Like he's like a little bit like more on board with his parents than like a teenage, like a true, like straight up, like almost out of the house teenager is. Right. I mean, I think he's pretty much exactly at the age where uh, things start to shift. Um, he's, he's, he's 12 or 13. So he, he's, uh, starting to kind of get his own ideas and, and follow his, his own path. Uh, but he still, uh, I think trusts his parents and, and thinks that everything that they do comes out of, of, um, a place of his self-interest. Um, but I think he's, he even gets older as, as he goes along. So you can kind of see the gears turning, uh, and him start to make his own decisions and uh, not necessarily trust everything that his parents uh, says. Talk to me about like 
the challenges of filming out in the desert? Like, what was that? I mean, I know that, you know, you're not trapped out there. You can go to the bathroom or, you know, <laughs> whatever. You have to I don't know. food and water. <laughs> we were pretty trapped. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, there were so many. I mean, it was the amount of different things that we encountered that honestly weren't even that bad. They just, I think, compounded. It just became funny. Um, I mean, it was really, really hard to just, like, this is hilarious. Like we had our every day, like that episode was daylight dependent. So we would be up at, you know, four every single day. And then our lo our location was an hour away. And we would actually change time zones when we were <laughs> going to set. And that would always be funny. So it'd be like, okay, wake up at four, get in the car. And then it would switch to like six. <laughs> and that was the funniest part. And I remember like, I'd always be texting everyone about it every day. And it was kind of like, the running joke about that episode of just how far everything was and um sort of the conditions of of being in the desert for that long sort of I mean by the end of it I felt like we had somewhat crossed the version of the border or at least it crossed the version of like what the characters go through because I mean in the episode it's only I think two two days and we'd been there for a month so I was like wow now we've actually been here longer than the characters and I sort of like we we knew sort of what that adversity felt like just in terms of the extremes of that environment that is wild you, you were there for like a full month and then I know also that you know the the show was interrupted by COVID and so then you sort of took time off and came back an entirely new location what was that like and uh, and I mean was the beach town a little better or Mexico City a little better in the desert I mean, I don't know if I would say it, it was better. I I think I enjoyed Puebla the most, but I mean, everything every every place that we filmed uh, had its had its ups and downs. And definitely at first, uh, filming in the desert was a new experience and kind of fun. Uh, but we filmed mostly in Puerto Vallarta and in Guadalajara when we came back from uh, from hiatus. Um, and I feel like the only thing, uh, like my biggest regret, I guess about not, uh, sorry, about filming during the pandemic and not being able to do as much was just that I didn't really get to explore those cities at all. Um, whereas with Puebla and, and Mexico City, we got to go out and kind of um, do all these things that, that I had heard about for a while. But uh, especially in Puerto Vallarta, I, I really wanted to see so much more of the city than I was able to. Um, so I think that was kind of uh, the, the worst part about filming during COVID in a way. Why are you doing this tent? Why is he doing this to you? Tina. Where are you guys headed? <laughs>